Good morning, morning. and welcome to worship here at St. Paul's Lutheran Church in Fleetwood, Pennsylvania. We welcome you who are here worshiping us in the congregation and those who are watching on Facebook Live and will also watch later today. We do have our new cameras um, installed thanks to Tony Cox, who spent hours um, getting this set up. So you notice there's no camera in the way, sitting in a pew somewhere, um, and we have full view of, of what you're doing as well as what we're doing up here. So we're very thankful to Tony and to the Council and Worship and Music Committee for approving the purchase of these cameras, which will make a much smoother um, way to operate here in person, but also a much smoother viewing experience for those who are watching from home. This morning, Jesus makes a protest against human traditions. Given the weight of divine law, the Pharisees are burdened down with the details, all the things that have to be polished and washed according to their tradition. But Jesus calls their attention to the things that really matter, saying that true cleanliness is about what comes from the human heart. Just uh, one announcement, and that's about Sunday, September 12th. It's coming up in just a few weeks, which marks the beginning of our, we could call it our fall season here at St. Paul's. First of all, worship times on that day will go back to our fall schedule, which is 8 and 10.30 a.m. It will also be rally day. And Carol has a number of activities for the Sunday school students and their parents, which will begin here in the sanctuary. Also, that is God's work, our Hand Sunday, is celebrated throughout the ELCA. And we will be doing two projects that day. One, during the Sunday school hour, for anyone who would like to write a personal note of greeting to any of our shut-ins or several other people that we know in our congregation are isolated at this time due to health and other concerns. Those, that will take place down in the social room. We have cards that we're going to be, uh, we have uh, ready for you to write on. Kira Perkins, one of our recent confirmands, is designing the cover to that card. Um, so we're trying to make this as inclusive an activity as possible. And then, of course, on Sunday afternoon from 1 to 5, we will be out at Becker's Church picking potatoes for the Potato Project. And you're invited um, to participate in that. Please stand as we begin our service with the confession and forgiveness. If we say we have no sin... We deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. Let us confess our sin to God who is faithful and who is just and who has promised to forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Most merciful God, have mercy on us. We confess to you that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not trusted you with our whole heart. We have not loved one another in deed and in truth. In your compassion, forgive our sin, and so uphold us by your Spirit, that we may live and serve you in newness of life. Through Jesus Christ, our light and our truth. Amen. With joy I proclaim to you that Almighty God, rich in mercy, abundant in love, forgives you all your sins, and grant you newness of life in Jesus Christ. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Please share a sign of God's peace. <clears throat> Celebration, all of creation sings for joy to 
God of life and love and freedom, praise and glory forevermore. pray. O oh God, our strength, without you we are weak and wayward creatures. Protect us from all dangers that attack us from the outside, and cleanse us from all evil that arises from within ourselves, that we may be preserved through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. You may be seated. The lesson is from the fourth chapter of Deuteronomy. So now, Israel, give heed to the statutes and ordinances that I am teaching you to observe, so that you may live to enter and occupy the land that the Lord, the God of your ancestors, is giving you. You must neither add anything to what I command you, nor take, any, take away anything from it, but keep the commandments of the Lord your God with which I am charging you. You must observe them diligently, for this will show your wisdom and discernment to the peoples, who, when they hear all these statutes, will say, Surely this great nation is a wise and discerning people. For what other great nation has a God so near to it as the Lord our God is whenever we call to him? And what other great nation has statutes and ordinances as just as this entire law that I am setting before you today? But take care and watch yourselves closely so as neither to forget the things that your eyes have seen, nor to let them slip from your mind all the days of your life. Make them known to your children and to your children's children. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. <clears throat> the words of eternal life. Alleluia. <clears throat> the Holy Gospel is told according to Mark, the seventh chapter. When the Pharisees and some of the scribes who had come from Jerusalem gathered around Jesus, they noticed that some of his disciples were eating with defiled hands, that is, without washing them. For Pharisees and all Jews do not eat anything unless they have thoroughly washed their hands, thus observing the tradition of the elders. 
and they do not eat anything from the marketplace unless they have washed it. And there are also many other traditions that they observe, the washing of cups, pots, and bronze kettles. So the Pharisees and the scribes said to Jesus, why do your disciples not observe the tradition of the elders, but eat with defiled hands? Jesus answered them, Isaiah prophesied rightly about you, hypocrites. For it is written, they worship me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. In vain do they worship, teaching human precepts as doctrine. You abandon the commandments of God and hold on to human traditions. Then Jesus gathered the crowd together again and said to them, Listen to me, all of you, and understand. There is nothing outside a person that by going in can defile. But it is what comes out that defiles. For it is from within, from the heart, that evil intentions come. Fornication, theft, murder, licentiousness, envy, wickedness, deceit, avarice, adultery, slander, pride, and folly. All these come from the heart, and they are what defile. The Gospel of the Lord. You may be seated, and I invite the children to come forward. Come on down. Wow. All the women are so dressed up today. So we've got Bronson, we've got Nora, and who else do we have? Can you tell me your names? Gloria. Gloria. Miriam. Miriam. All right. So, this morning in the gospel, Jesus wants to make sure that we don't get distracted. So what does that mean? That means he wants to make sure we're paying attention when we worship him. So what do you think are some ways we could pay attention when we're here in worship today? You have any ideas, Nora? No ideas? What do you think, Katie? You can come up to the children's sermon. Can you say that louder? You can come to, up to the children's sermon. Okay, that's a good thing. Bronson, you have any ideas? You can pay attention and just pay attention. Well, that's right. You're used to doing that in school all day or preschool or when you're at home and you have to listen to your parents. So here are some things I want to just pick out that are really important when we worship. One of the things is pray, praying. So how do you pray? What, what, do you, what do you do with your body when you pray? Okay, what do you do, Norm? Do you pray and you fold your head? Do you sit or do you kneel? You don't know? Well, that part doesn't matter. But the fact that you bow your head, it shows God that we're praying when that's we're not doing anything else. And folding our hands is a good posture to um, kind of makes, reminds us that 
we're praying right now, and everything we do right now is going to be saying we're talking to God. So we're going to do that here in worship. So when we pray, maybe your parents could say, hey, make sure you're folding your hands and your head's bowed. What's, what are other things we do in worship that are important? You've got to speak up. Listen to church. Okay, listen. All right, listen to what's being said. So you're listening right now, right? All ears. That's important. But there's one other thing that we do that can be fun. Singing. Singing. Now, even if you can't read the words, and even if you don't know the tunes, you know what you can do, girls? You don't? You can hum. Can you hum? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay? And the more you pay attention to the hymns, you'll learn those hymns because we sing them over and over. And someday you'll be able to read the words and sing along. But even now, you can pay attention and praise Jesus by humming with the, with the hymns you don't know. And if there's some you do know, singing the words you can. Okay? Does that sound like a good deal? All righty. You guys can go back. Thank you. A man walks into a pastor's office on a Sunday morning before worship. And he's upset. Because as he walked in the door, he saw this display. And it had Sunday school on it, except it had Sunday school spelled S-K-O-O-L. He was upset because he knew that the people who set up the display were 7th and 8th graders. And he complained to the pastor that these kids just didn't know how to spell. He was tempted to take the sign down until the pastor told him this. That sign and that spelling is the theme for our rally day. The spelling S-K-O-O-L is intended to kind of make light of the school part of Sunday school. In other words, it's not going to be like Monday through Friday going to school, six hours. It's, there's going to be some fun. There's going to be some experiences. There's going to be some friendships made. Second of all, those kids spent many hours of their Saturday decorating for Rally Day. That's how much they cared about what went on and what kids would see as they came into the door on Sunday morning. They say, and it is true, that the devil is in the details. Isn't that correct? At least for me, the deeper I get into the details the harder it is for re me to remember what the heck these details are for. And if you get obsessed with details, there's no end to trying to get everything perfect in an imperfect world. The man that came in was obsessed with spelling. When the whole purpose of the display was to be welcoming and colorful and warm and inviting to both the members' children as well as children who were invited as guests that day. It was not about the spelling of school. It was not even about the colors that the kids used or maybe a few rough edges to the display. It was that they committed themselves out of love for the church and for Christ to create it. Oftentimes, 
People come at things and do the motions, but without the motivation. They try to follow the rules exactly, but lack focus on the relationships of those who are working with them. They pay lip service, as did the Pharisees, but they're not doing it, whatever it is, out of loving service. Sometimes human traditions, human details, become so important to people that God is squeezed out. It's no longer about a God who, you know, forgives us for our rough edges, for our mistakes, for our bad color combinations or crude cutouts. And that's exactly what the situation was as we enter the story this morning between Jesus and scribes and Pharisees who had come from Jerusalem. You know, that was the center of perfection for the church, or so it was thought. Jesus was trying to explain to these scribes, it's not that hand-washing is not important. It's not that observing traditions that have been passed down to us are not important. But when the preparations for those things get to the point where we don't remember why we're doing it, we go through the motions, but our motivation is not directed towards God. We complete all the details, but we forget the bigger purpose. What Jesus does then is distinguishes for them the things that really matter. And for him, it's about matters that come from within us, from the heart. We can eat all kinds of food, and even if it's poison food, it doesn't make us evil. We can eat our sandwich with dirty hands, though I don't think any of us would want to do that. But that doesn't make us not want to love God. But it is what is the state of our heart. It's what comes from within, from our inner thoughts. In ancient times, it, the heart was thought not so much as an organ that pumps blood in the body, but as the center of one's being, the place from which our decision-making comes, the place from which we discern what is good and what is bad. And so, in this text, it is critical to understand that, to understand what Jesus is saying. So for this example, what matters right now are cluttering your heart? What concerns? What details? Is there a detail about something you didn't complete yesterday and it's kind of bugging you? Did you not get the lawn mowed before it rained? That's one of my obsessions. We're filled with so much of this. Some days it can drive us crazy. And yet there is a bigger picture. What really matters is what we have to keep asking ourselves. When we feel so compressed by anxiety, whether it's good anxiety about something exciting coming up or bad anxiety about fearing we've forgotten an essential detail to a project or to part of our constructing our new deck or something about getting the kids ready for school. We go back to the place and ask ourselves, what should really matter? And what does Jesus say? It comes from here. Despite all the details, what really matters 
here. And what comes from here is, first of all, love. And love is meant for relationships. So no matter what we're doing, what is the bigger picture? Does it matter that we didn't get all the details done yesterday? Does it really matter that we fear we may have forgotten something to a project? What matters is the motivation we put into everything. What matters is the bigger picture. In practical terms, the end product. In spiritual terms, Christ's gift of grace that says to us, I don't want perfectionists. I want lovers. I want people who love me. I want to give you permission to let your anxieties go and to love me who promises you grace and peace. So the starting place is here. What practices in worship really matter to you? Focus in on them. Is it the hymn singing? Is it the prayers? Is it the gospel? Or the sermon? Is it the words that people speak to you before and after the service that empower you? If you're in motion, figure out what your motivation is. If you're a detail person, and that's completely fine. But cherish the relationships of those with whom you're fulfilling those details. If you find yourself just going through the motions, just paying lip service to God because your mind is somewhere else, ask God in that moment to spark the love that he has put into your heart so that you can focus again. I can tell you that man who came into the pastor's office, when he left that office, he went out and looked at that display again. Tried to imagine it was the first time he saw it. With the knowledge now that kids... Seventh and eighth graders gave a Saturday because they loved this church and they loved God and they loved their experience in Sunday school in order to create a display that welcomed others. His heart changed when he discovered it was about the love of those involved and the love of Christ. And that is what matters above all. Amen. Let us recite our faith in the Apostles' Creed. 
I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Throughout the year, we include the service of healing as part of our worship as a way to remind us all that a primary function of Jesus' ministry was healing. And that healing was not just about the stories about Jesus healing women and blind people and lame, but also his healing for us. So I ask you to bring your hearts to Christ, whatever in you is is ailing or troubled, and hear these words. Our Lord Jesus healed many as a sign of the reign of God come near and sent the disciples to continue this work of healing with prayer, the laying on of hands and anointing. In the name of Christ, the great healer and reconciler of the world, we now entrust to God all who are in need of healing. I invite the congregation to please kneel for the prayers. Made children and heirs of God's promise, we pray for the church, the world, and all in need. We pray for the church, that it is a safe haven for all who seek your presence. Fill it with pastors, deacons, and leaders who echo your expansive and generous welcome. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray for the whole creation that plants and animals have the habitat and resources to thrive and flourish. Inspire us to protect threatened habitats and ensure a sustainable future for generations to come. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray for individuals in positions of authority, president, governor, senators and representatives, as well as our local leaders, mayor and borough council. Raise up wise and discerning leaders and guide them to seek the benefit of every person. Lord, in your mercy, hear our our prayer. prayer. We pray for this congregation, especially all those beginning a new school year, for our students, for our teachers, administrators, and members of the school board, and our parents, empower teachers and school administrators, Guide students in their learning and development. Accompany parents, foster parents, and caregivers who provide encouragement and love. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Lord Jesus, we pray in sorrow for the 13 servicemen and women who died trying to protect the lives of Afghan citizens and people from various nations. We pray for all our members serving in the service at this time, that you might continue to protect them even in times of great danger. We pray that you would protect the lives of Afghanis and of people from the United States, France, Great Britain, Germany, and other countries who are awaiting and hoping the time when they can be delivered from the violence. We pray for all those now in the path of Hurricane Ida and in the path of wildfires. Lord, deliver your people from danger. Are there others for whom we should pray? Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We give thanks for the faithful departed 
who showed us how to honor God with our heart, inspire us by their example, and renew our faith, trusting that we will be united with them in glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Receive these prayers, O God, and those in our hearts known only to you, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Sisters and brothers, receive a sign of healing and wholeness in the name of the triune God. Father in heaven, for Jesus' sake, send your Holy Spirit upon your servants. Drive away all sickness of body and spirit. Make whole that which is broken. Deliver them from the power of evil and preserve them in true faith to share in the power of Christ's resurrection and to serve you with all the saints now and evermore. Amen. Almighty God, who is a strong tower to all, to whom all things in heaven and on earth bow and obey, be now and evermore your sure defense and help you to know that the name given to us for the health and salvation is the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. You may now stand, please. Grains of wheat scattered on the hill were gathered into one to become our bread. So may all your people from all the ends of earth be gathered into one with you. As this cup of blessing is shared within our midst, may we share the presence as the grains of wheat once scattered on the hill were gathered into one to become our bread, so may all your people from all the ends of earth be gathered into one in you. Let this be a taste of all that is to which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He gave thanks and broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again after supper, he took the cup. He gave thanks and gave it for all to drink saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Gathered as one by the Spirit of Christ, let us join together and pray the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory.
forever and ever. Amen. For those who are receiving communion in the pews, and for all the body of Christ given for you, the blood of Christ shed for you, you may be seated. May the love of Jesus bless and strengthen your heart. Gloria, is this Gloria? Yeah. This, which one is Gloria? Nora. Nora. Well, oh, this is Nora. And this is Gloria. Gloria. May Jesus bless you and keep your heart forever. Nora, may Jesus bless and keep your heart forever. This is Miriam. Miriam, may the Lord Jesus bless you and keep your heart forever. George, may Jesus, your Savior, keep you in his arms forever. Amen.
body of Christ given for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. Please rise. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Jesus, bread of life, we have received from your table more than we could ever ask. As you have nourished us in this meal, now strengthen us to love the world with your own life. In your name we pray. Amen. The blessing of God who provides for us, feeds us, and journeys with us be upon you today and forever. Amen. Amen. Go in peace. You are the body of Christ. Thanks be to God.